Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Young-won of Online Surgery. I'm going to share with you my clinical case. The patient for today is 78-year-old male patient. The patient actually came in in March 2021, and both left and right, there were a lot of implants. The periodontal condition on the upper and lower and the right side became unfavorable. There was a lot of mobility and pain. There are some problems with the existing implant, but the patient wanted treatment in the upper and lower on the right side. The treatment plan. The plan was to remove the long bridge spanning from number 43 to 47. Extraction for number 48 were planned as well. Three implants were to be placed, especially in number 43. OS Builder will be used for GBR. Actually, this video clip was shown in the online surgery course last June, and I'm going to focus on the upper. The treatment plan for the upper is the alveolar bone condition is not very good in number 14, 15, and 16. Extractions will be done. The residual bone height up to the sinus is not significant. Therefore, last kit will be used for sinus graft. There are three teeth and there are prostheses front and back. The canine root direction, considering this, it's too tight to place three implants. Therefore, I decided to place two implants. I'm going to show you the CT, but in the case of number 13, there was severe periapical lesion. Epicoectomy is going to be done. Endodontic treatment is going to be provided so that patient can use the long bridge in the anterior side. Epicoectomy was planned. In May 2021, three implants were placed in lower posterior and OS builder was used in number 43 for GBR. This is after one month. Extraction is not done in the upper. Three teeth, number 14, 15, 16, were extracted. After that, in number 13, we did endodontic treatment. You'll be able to see it on CT. But canine root is quite distally tilted. I took CT before surgery. In the area where teeth are missing in the upper right, you can see quite a lot of mucosal thickening, but maxillary ostium is well maintained and it's not going to be a problem in doing sinus graft. In the posterior area, where number 14, 15, and 16 are missing, there's not that much of a residual bone left. Number 13 on CT, on the apex area, it's slightly protruded outside the buccal bone, and the patient may have experienced a fistula from time to time, and there's external resorption on the apex side. PFM bridge existed, and I did endodontic treatment. The patient was admitted, and epicoectomy was planned. As shown, using last kit, core drill will be used to form lateral window. Bone graft is going to be done, and implant will be placed like this. As shown, bone graft was done. Last kit was used. Sinus approach was done. Two implants were placed. This was the plan. This is immediate post-op image. During surgery, the distal implant prosthesis failed and crown was removed. The distal side of the canine root was removed because the space is quite tight considering the prosthesis in the most distal side. Two implants were placed in number 15 and 16. Bone graft was done. This is CT after surgery. In number 15 and 16, lateral window was formed for sinus graft. This is number 15. In number 16, bone graft was done like this. This is after one month and a half later, this is number 16 and 15. 
Mucosal thickening still can be observed, but there's no complication within the sinus. This is after five months. A secondary surgery was done, and this is approximately eight months later, that surgery. It's been about two months after prosthesis was loaded in the upper. The prosthesis was delivered for the lower as well. And the main complaint when the patient came in were addressed. The implants placed by a different dentist will be maintained. This is how the treatment was done. I'm going to show you the surgical clip. incision is being made. From Cresta, I'm going to slightly make it inclined towards the palatal side. At times, you can reverse the mass, and from distal to the mesial side, you can make incision like this. Vertical releasing incision was made on the mesial side because we're going to do epicoectomy on the canine. Flap elevation is being done. On the distal side, in the extraction side, healing is not fully done, so it's quite difficult. You can see that the crown of the implant on the distal side has become dislodged. It's removed. The flap elevation is done. On the apex side of the canine, it's exposed. The granulation tissue is stuck to the mucoperiosteal flap, so I'm removing it using curette. Granulation tissue is being removed. It's fully removed. There can be apical lesion left, so I'm going to use round bar with a straight hand piece. I'm doing epicoectomy on the canine root. The preservation division may do uh, retrofilling, but I just to remove it. I'm using last drill, 7 millimeter core drill with 1 millimeter stopper. I'm forming a window. Depending on position, when you do last drill, access can be difficult. You need to do retraction well. The lateral wall is quite thick. I think it's not going to make it, so I'm using 2 millimeter stopper instead of 1 millimeter. This patient has a very thick lateral wall. 2.25 millimeter stopper is used because 2 millimeter stopper was not in enough. Lateral window is being formed. 7mm diameter core drill is used. You can see that bone knee window is formed. Freer elevator is used to remove bone lid. You can see the sinus mucosa moving. Membrane separator is using. I'm using membrane separator to detach it. Freer elevator is used to elevate the sinus membrane. Mucosal thickening was quite severe in the case of this patient. So you can see sinus membrane perforation. I'm elevating. Lens drill is used. You're in the desired position in number 15. Drilling position is checked. The 2.2 twister drill is used. You can see that it's connected to the sinus floor. Parallel pin is used to check the position. I'm checking the relation with the antagonist. In order to find the position, I'm repositioning the crown of the implant that was existing. Parallel pin is placed. So I'm considering the 
position and form of the mesial implant. 3.5 by 10 millimeter one to two taper drill is used. After taper drill, 3.5 by 10 millimeter taper drill is used. Taper parallel pin is used to check the relation with antagonist. Depth gauge is used to check the residual bone height. On the distal side, 4.0 by 10 millimeter one to two taper drill is used. I'm not drilling full length. Allogenic bone, sure os, and aos, which is bovine bone, is used for bone graft. On the host bone side, sure os is used. And on top of it, AOS is used for bone graft. The diameter of last drill is 7 mm. Bone graft is done. TS3BA surface, the 4.5 by 10 mm implant is placed. Irrigate the implant sufficiently with saline water before doing the placement. Mount extension and torque wrench is used to find the final position. Primary stability is sufficient. TS3BA surface 5.0 by 10 mm implant is placed on the distal side. On the mesial side, the canine root is quite distally tilted. I have placed implants in number 15 and 16, avoiding that. The position is checked using the crown on the distal side to check the position. Pre-mount is being removed. Open wrench is used to hold the mount because the primary stability is concerning, especially for number 16. You make sure the implant does not move. Pre-mount is removed. Implant driver is used to get the final position. Once again, you check the position. You try to place it quite deeper. In number 15, there's quite a lot of alveolar bones, so I try to place it deep. ISQ value is taken in the case of number 16. Primary stability is lacking, it's 46. In the case of number 15, it's 71. This is the ISQ value. Cover screw is connected. You can see that the bone lid that was formed during the bony window. On the buckle side of number 16, because there is buckle defect, it's going to be used like a tautonous bone block. And on top, I'm adding more AOS for bone graft. Because the membrane was perforated slightly, I'm using fibrin glue to repair the sinus and I'm also applying fibrin glue on top of the bone graft to fixate it. On the canine side, where epicoectomy was done, bone graft material is being placed. Fibrin glue is used here as well to fixate the bone graft. Os guide. In order to do that, I'm using paper to find the position to get a rough sense of the size. And following that, os guide is being trimmed.
You need to irrigate it using saline water. You put it below the bottle flap. Especially, you pay heed to number 16 where GBR was done. OS guide is used. Collagen membrane is used for coverage. Flap is being pulled on the distal side. Because we did augmentation, we can see it's quite lacking. Perio steel releasing incision is made. You can see that the flap can be closed tension free. Suturing is now going to be done on distal side of number 13, the most critical area. I'm suturing here first. The canine area is used as an anchor to do approximation of flap properly. In my case, I find the distal side of canine most critical and on the front side where vertical releasing incision was done, suturing is done. On the distal side, because I used a collagen membrane, when you do suture, you make sure you don't go through that collagen membrane. This is how it is being closed off. Suture is complete. The surgical clip that I've shown you, I used the last kit to form lateral bone window. As you've seen in the video before surgery, the sinus membrane thickening was observed in those case because there's pathology at times there can be perforation. When there's a sinus membrane perforation, I've already mentioned this in previous lecture, but you can use fiber and glue for repair. On the buccal side, there was a little bit of a defect. The last kit was used. The lateral window, the bony lid was used, not in the original position, but on the buccal side of number 16, where there was buccal defect. Xenograft AOS was also used. I used the bony lid like autogenous bone graft. Collagen membrane was applied to do GBR, and that's how the surgery was closed, as mentioned. After eight months since surgery, the patient had no major problems and healing was done nicely. Thank you for watching.